Welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. So today we're doing another video here in atomic structure and electron configuration. So let's get moving. Bam! So today we're doing a photoelectric effect calculation number one and two. So let's get moving on these. We're going to calculate the energy of one mole of photons of red light. Okay? The least energetic light in the visible spectrum. This red light has a wavelength of 700 decimal nanometers. So let's get this calculation moving here. So this is what we're going to start off with. I'm hoping you're familiar with this. That C is the speed of light. The lambda is the wavelength. The nu is the frequency. What we do have is the speed of light because that is a constant. That's 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. We also have the wavelength. That way we can calculate the frequency. So we're going to rearrange this here just a little bit so that we solve for the frequency. And then we're going to plug in the values that are as appropriate. That is the 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. That is the speed of light. That is a constant. And then I have the 700 nanometers. But in order to cancel out the meters for the speed of light, I need to convert my nanometers into meters. And that's 1 times 10 to the 9 nanometers in 1 meter. So this will allow me to cancel out the nanometers, then the meters, and then I'm going to have per second, and that is a frequency. Frequency is per unit of time. So that is my frequency. So I still have not calculated the energy. That is my first step here. I have the frequency that is calculated. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use another equation, and you should be familiar with this equation. We're going to calculate the energy per photon using... Uh, this equation. That is, the E is for energy, that's for per photon, and then that's equal to Planck's constant times the frequency. Well, we already have the frequency that we just solved for, and we're going to use Planck's constant. So we're going to plug in Planck's constant, and then we're going to plug in the frequency, and those are those two values right there. You should see that your units of seconds cancels out in both of these, and then you're going to have joules per photon. Okay, and then that is this number here. That's 2.85 times 10 to the negative 19 joules per photon. Okay, all right. Now, we're going to calculate the energy per one mole of photon. So we have the amount of energy per photon, so we're going to be using per, mole, per one mole of photons. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to take that energy that we have, which is per photon. We're going to use Avogadro's number so that we cancel out the moles. Okay, so that we have, uh, sorry, we cancel out the photon so that we have per, fo per mole. And then we're also going to convert to kilojoules. And we're going to convert to kilojoules because otherwise our number is just too big. It's just a really simple method here. And then once we get that, we're going to get this value here. That energy in kilojoules per mole is 172 kilojoules per mole. And then you're going to ask yourself, so what? What does this matter? What does this number matter? So again, this is red light. It is the least energetic uh, wavelength or region of the uh, visible region of the electromagnetic spectrum. So why is this number important or not important? So here's why this number is important. This is in the range of energies that can break bonds. Now, these bonds are not very strong, so an iodine-iodine bond is about 151 kilojoules per mole, and an iodine-bromine bond is about 175 kilojoules per mole. So you should see that it's in that range of to break some bonds. Now, these atoms are very large, and they're relatively far apart, and the bonds are not necessarily all that strong, so these might be easy to break, and that's why that is a low energy wavelength in the region, in the, in the visible region of the electromagnetic spectrum here. Let's try another calculation and see what this works here for you. So this one, the photoelectric effect calculation number two, awesome, we're going to calculate the energy of one mole of photons of ultraviolet light with a wavelength of 15 nanometers. So 15 nanometer wavelength of light is in the ultraviolet region. And you should understand the reason why you're putting sunscreen on your body or wearing sunglasses is that you are protecting yourself from ultraviolet light. Okay, and this is very energetic, so it should have more energy than the previous calculation, hopefully, because in the visible region, that's lower in energy all total, and the red region that we just calculated was definitely lower in energy. All right, so we're going to do a similar calculation here. I'm hoping that you can actually pause the video and do this calculation on your own to try your math skills here. So we're going to do a similar thing that we did before. We got the speed of light is equal to the lambda times nu. That's 
that's the wavelength times frequency. We're going to plug in our numbers here. We're going to rearrange this here, and we're going to cancel out our nanometers and our meters, and we're going to get per second, and that is a frequency. So the frequency of this is 2.0 times 10 to the 16 per second. That is the frequency of this 15 nanometer wavelength of light in the ultraviolet region. We're going to calculate the energy per photon of this, and that is using, using Planck's constant and the frequency that we just calculated. And the units of seconds cancels out here, and we're going to end up with joules. And this is 1.33 times 10 to the negative 17 joules per photon. And we're still looking to calculate the energy per one mole of photons. Okay, we're going to cancel out these photons. One mole is equal to Avogadro's number of anything. It's Avogadro's number of photons. And then we're also going to convert those joules into kilojoules, just so that the numbers make sense in a region that we are familiar with. Okay, and that is what we have here. We can see that the photons cancels out and the kilojoules are there in the numerator and the joules cancel out. So we're going to have kilojoules per mole. And this is the number that we're going to get. That is 8.0 times 10 to the 3 kilojoules per mole. Then you're going to ask yourself, well, does this number, is this a big number, a small number? Well, let's find out. This is beyond the range of energies that can break most bonds. And that is a carbon monoxide has a triple bond in it. And um, that bond energy is only 1,046 kilojoules per mole. And that number, the 8 times 10 to the 3, that's a positive kilojoules per mole, is much larger than that. So that's why ultraviolet light, you need to protect yourself against this. That's why you're wearing long sleeve shirts, you're wearing a hat if you're bald like me, you're wearing sunglasses, you're putting on sunscreen using an umbrella, whatever is necessary to protect yourself from ultraviolet light because it is high in energy and it can damage you because it has high energy, it will penetrate you more and it can break bonds and you want to do, what you want to do is protect yourself from that high energy wavelengths of light. Okay, all right, that's another crazy video from the Crazy Hat Chemist and I got a crazy hat for you here. I don't know if you can see the true length of this hat. Okay, it's a crocodile rock time, and I hope you have a great day. Give me a thumbs up if you like that video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, and have a fantastic day, and look forward to studying more chemistry in the atomic structure electron configuration setup. All right, let's get going. Bye now.